Hey guys, it's Polo Loco here with your weekly video and today's topic is going to be gauging your dance partner. Okay, so what this means is basically assessing the skill level of the person that you're dancing with so that you can get the most out of that dance. This means that you'll have more fun and the dance will be a lot safer. So, how do you gauge your dance partner? Well, the first way that you would gauge someone is going to be through observation. You can look at somebody on the dance floor and tell if it looks like they're gliding on ice, if they're very smooth and effortless, or if they're struggling, they're falling over, and they happen to be off time throughout the whole dance. These are indicators that will maybe, you know, in your mind bump them up or bump them down as far as their skill level goes. So what is the next way that you can gauge someone's skill level, right? This is the most important one, and this is going to be to test drive. The only way that you're really gonna know is by actually taking them out to dance. This person that you observed could be dancing with someone that's so good that they're carrying that person and making them look amazing. And if you go and try to dance with that person and execute you know, all these you know, crazy stylings, these crazy patterns, then you're gonna be in for a surprise. Someone could get hurt because you're trying to make someone do something that they're not uh, capable of doing yet, right? So it's very important to test drive. This is gonna be the key component and because of that, I'm going to cross this out. Not saying that you can't do this, but this is simply an approximation. This is not how you can get a very accurate read. This is how you do it. Now, how do you test drive when you're dancing with someone? Well, first you start off with the very basics. If you're a follow, you focus on just following. You limit your styling. You see if your partner is actually leading you through the figures. When he does a cross body lead, does he just get out of the way and expect you to go through? If he's gonna give you a turn, does he raise his arm and expect you to just turn? Or is he physically making you move and turn? If he's doing those things, then you know that you're gonna have some sort of support and frame and, and, and connection that you can rely on to maybe experiment and do some styling without taking yourself off balance because someone's holding you. At the same time, if you're the lead, you can start off with whatever the basics are for whatever dance, whether it's bachata or salsa, if you're doing a basic, a left turn, a right turn, if you're doing waltz, a box step, if you're doing West Coast Swing, a sugar push, right? Whatever the basic is for the dance that you are dancing, you start off for the first few eight counts just doing basics until you feel like you hit a wall and you've determined, okay, Here's my limitations. This is the things, these are the things that they struggle with. So I'm going to stop right there. So again, once you determine where their level is at, you dance at their level. That's going to be the next thing. If someone's a more seasoned dancer than you, how do you dance up to their level? Well, you can't. So not to discourage anyone, this is actually a good thing. Okay. What this means is that you don't have to hold back. This person can carry their own weight or they'll be able to carry their weight better than you can, right? Which means that you're able to experiment a little bit more. Um, if you are a lead and you go to do a turn that you've always done and this person is more seasoned so they feel much lighter, what was one turn, it's gonna feel very easy to do maybe two or three turns because this person is very stable and sometimes they're so light that if you give them just for what you think is one, for them, it's enough to make them do two turns, right? So you can definitely experience, um, obviously, if you feel unsafe trying to experiment, then don't do it. You want to obviously experiment within reason, but dancing up is going to help you expand your repertoire. You're going to be doing things that you didn't think you could do by experimenting. So thus, the quantity of your repertoire will go up. So this is very important to know here. Now, what happens when you dance down? Well, now you're limiting yourself to whatever your partner is capable of doing. So that means that there's gonna be a lot of repetition. When you do a lot of repetitions in anything, what does that do? That gives you a higher sense of mastery, right? Because you've done it so many times. The key to mastering anything is doing it over and over and over and over and over. So when you repeat, what are you doing? You are improving the quality of your repertoire. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys probably didn't see this whole thing starting at the top, coming down to these two things. Dancing with beginners improves the quality of your dance. Dancing with 
more seasoned dancers will improve the quantity, okay? Now, it doesn't mean that I can't dance with a beginner and get quantity. And it doesn't mean that if you're dancing with a more seasoned dancer that you're not gonna get quality. But you will definitely get more quantity from here and more quality from here, okay? And the great thing is that you wanna be able to dance with both. When you dance with this person and you do these things that you've never done before, now you have an idea of how they should feel. Usually when I dance down to someone's level, I don't meet them exactly where they are. So what I mean by that is if I feel like I'm here and they're here, I will dance right here, just above their comfort zone so that they're getting to do new things. And this is why, because they're dancing up, they're, they're able to do different things, right? Their, their, their quantity starts to go up. And by doing that, right, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm repeating things that, I'm, that I've done over here with a beginner and I'm trying to master that. It's easier to do whatever it is that you're trying to do with someone who doesn't depend on you as much than someone who is gonna freak out if you do something that will surprise them. So if you can do all those things with a beginner, then imagine how easy it will be to do it with a more seasoned dancer. So this is why oftentimes, if you ever see me at a social, I'll take a lot of beginners out to dance because I pride myself on this. There's nothing more rewarding to me than dancing with someone who has gone out like three or four times. Uh, they barely have their basic down, but I see that their basic is a confident one. They're, they feel confident about it. That's all they know. But I know that as long as they keep their feet moving and as long as they keep their timing, there are certain figures that I know that I can just do with anyone regardless of their level. And some of them are, you know, more intermediate borderline advanced, right? And, and obviously it's not, I can't unload everything, but it's nice to be able to dance with someone who's not as seasoned, make them look good, and understand that I really, really mastered the things that I did in that dance because not everybody else would be able to do that. And again, this is why I say observation is not the best tool to gauge your dance partner. So it's very important. You test drive. Don't be afraid to dance up. Don't be intimidated because it's going to help you grow. And don't be a snob and dance down, right? The biggest reason why I put this here is because these are reasons why people say no sometimes. And I made a video um, not too long ago talking about some good reasons to say no. These are not good reasons to say no. Oh, this person's too good. Oh, that person's not good enough, no. The only one that might potentially be a reason to say no is maybe this one, and that's only when it has to do with safety. If somebody is so unskilled that they're actually dangerous on the dance floor, then you don't wanna dance with them. You don't wanna get hurt, right? So this is a good reason to say no. And um, obviously there's all the other reasons that I made in my video, but just because someone's better than you or not as good as you are, then that's not a good reason, in my opinion. So keep these things in mind. I hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you guys next week.